Hello everyone, this is Alan Schimmel, Editor-in-Chief of DevOps.com, and thanks for joining us on what promises to be a really exciting, interesting webinar today. Today's webinar is Efficient Performance Test Automation, Optimizing the Jenkins Pipeline, and it's brought to us, sponsored by Blaze Meter, or CA Blaze Meter, and uh, in addition to which, uh, CloudBees, uh, presenter from CloudBees will be joining us. Before we get to that though, let me just take a few moments as we allow, allow for latecomers to log in to go over uh, the flow of the webinar today and what, what we would like to, uh, how we'd like to interact with our audience. Number one, this webinar is being recorded and that's always the first question people want to know, right? Is, is the webinar going to be available? Yes, the webinar, the full presentation is being recorded and will be available uh, after our live broadcast. Uh, number two, we have set aside what we hope is going to be enough time to answer uh, questions from you, our audience. It makes for an important part of our webinar and so we have set aside time for QA. In order to get your question answered by uh, our panelists, though, we're going to ask that you use your GoToWebinar Control Panel Question section, which is if you, for most of you, your GoToWebinar Control Panel will be in your top right corner. If you go down to where it says Questions and hit the little arrow or carrot, it'll expand. And you can see that you could put your questions right in there. A couple of great reasons to do it. Number one, if you're like me, you may have a question that comes into your mind early in the webinar, but by the time the end of the webinar comes around, you forgot what your question was. Well, you, there's no reason for that to happen. You can type your question in in real time here. It will be queued and in the webinar, in the uh, question queue, and we will get to it as, as soon as possible at the appropriate time. Number two, if, as usual, we get so many questions we can't answer every single one in the time allotted today, we have a written record of the question and we could ask our uh, uh, panel members to perhaps uh, get you a, a, an answer in writing at, at a later date if not live or maybe we can post that for everyone as well. So please, use your question section, type your questions in. We also do have a chat section down at the bottom of your control panel. For our webinars, we use chat more if, as if, you're, ha if you're having some sort of technical problem. If you can you know, see the control panel, but for instance, audio is not working or your slides aren't advancing, we do have a web engineer standing in the background, webinar engineers monitoring chat, and if you tell them your problem, they will try to help you more often than not they do fix whatever the problem is and you can uh, we'll get that going. I see we already have it looks like questions popping in um, but we will get to them at our time. Um, that being said we also will have a survey following the end of today's webinar and it's it's, it's just a, a 30 second couple question survey but please if you, we have if you have time take Take a moment, take the survey. It really helps us as we go forward, uh, making sure the 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 uh, presentations are on mark and they're on a topic that you would uh, like to see. That being said, now let let's move forward a little bit. We're going to also have some polling questions I should mention as well. So it's an interactive webinar. Today's webinar, as I mentioned before, is on efficient performance test automation and optimizing the Jenkins pipeline. For me, why I'm really excited about this because it brings together what I think are two of the most important or two of the most dynamic pieces of the DevOps marketplace today, and that is. Jenkins, Jenkins Pipeline is, you know, in the Jenkins 2.0, we're part of the whole CloudBees Jenkins community, and test automation. I don't think there's any topic as hot as test automation today in, in DevOps, and uh, Sec DevOps, in, in all phases of, of IT. We, we're talking, well, all phases of business, we're talking about automation, promising to revolutionize the way we do things. Nowhere is this more I think prevalent than what we're seeing happening in the test automation uh, world today. And companies like BlazeMeter are frankly responsible for a lot of the momentum behind that. Um, so, you know, marrying test automation with Jenkins Pipeline, I think it doesn't get any better. And I hope, I hope you'll agree and I hope you'll find this uh, an interesting conversation. 
I see someone already asked will the presentation and or slides be available and recorded so I'll say it one more time before we jump in yes this is being recorded and yes it will be available uh, probably within 24 hours or so of uh, of today's webinar. With that being said, let me introduce you to what I think are two great presenters for uh, today's webinar. Um, and like magic, it appears. So today's presenters are, first of all, from CloudBees. Happy to have Neil Hudson, Principal Solution Architect at CloudBees. And he'll be showing us some of the Jenkins pipeline uh, stuff today. And then joining Neil is Guy Salton. Guy is a senior support engineer with Blaze Meter, and, and Guy's going to actually give us some demo of, of some new exciting Blaze Meter functionality. Gentlemen, welcome to our webinar today. Thank you, Alan. Neil. This is Neil Hudson, everyone. Yep. And uh, Alan, thank you for that nice intro and uh, explaining all the logistics and details. So I get the okay. honor of going first. Uh, so basically, the reason we're here today is to talk about software, and, and certainly software at the speed of ideas. I think we can all appreciate, um, you know, from an early age, I think we all want to get from idea to actual, you know, making an idea stick. Um, and so this next slide here, you know, this really is a little survey that we, we did with our friends at Perforce. Um, we basically said, all right, so out of, you know, survey of software developers, managers, and executives, um, how many of these organizations, right, have actually started down the path to continuous delivery? And by continuous delivery, we mean, you know, the ability to basically get your ideas to uh, software, at least software that could be, you know, put into production. So if you rank those benefits, uh, I think it's no surprise, right, that faster time to market is likely the, the number one reason that folks want to get to continuous delivery. Um, certainly better quality of product is second. Um, and then I think overall, right, the last part there, reduced cost of development, I think is uh, is probably in everybody's mind. Uh, at least it's going to be in your, your finance department's mind. If, you know. Neil, so, this is Alan. It, Neil, if you don't mind, uh, the people in the audience had asked, maybe you can speak a little louder or turn your volume up. Absolutely. I will Thank you. speak louder. Okay. So, okay. So then, with the in, in terms of the market transformation, um, we also surveyed folks and, and asked them what, in reality, who's actually practicing continuous delivery, uh, and in fact, how often do you deploy to production? So it's one thing to have always, you know, artifacts which you could put into production. It's another to say how often you do that, right? So. With that, we found 61% are actually practicing CD, actually deploying at least once per week or more. Uh, and so you can see there some of the details you know, in terms of uh, how often that, that process goes through. So what are the requirements for continuous delivery, uh, certainly at scale? Well, <clears throat> along with our folks at Blaze Meter, we, we, we like to think that Jenkins, as the continuous integration, continuous delivery, you know, that methodology, that hub, if you will, of the DevOps, uh, you know, tool set uh, certainly can come to, to fruition. Um, the next piece is certainly knowledge and expertise. So certainly a lot of you folks that are on the call today have, you know, uh, quite a bit of Jenkins expertise. Um, when I'm talking with you, uh, either at webinars like this one or conferences or <clears throat> on conversations over the, you know, um, go-to meeting, I hear that time and time again that you that think you know most folks feel pretty confident that uh, they can get their tool chain interactive and working um, with you know, all the extensibility that Jenkins can provide. And then I think probably the number one reason um, we, we, we have these conversations right is, is due to security and compliance. So that, that's a big one where people want to have audit trails. they want to basically have you know a paper trail so they can follow that idea all the way from code commit through to the actual artifact and then you know basically be able to tell the folks that uh, want to know you know where that, that particular uh, bit of code came from and also you know the fact that it passed security and audit and you know analysis that type of thing. So skill and operations become a big part of this. Um, certainly if, as you start to you know evolve your tool chain, you go from one instance to several or you go from you know several projects to many, 
you get more and more teams involved. Um, in fact, more teams and organizations start to find out, and of course now they want you know, more automation in their world. Um, they want to try and you know, avoid the human interaction and, and the error proneness right, of uh, doing things manually. And then uh, control and visibility here as we build our, our uh, little pyramid here. Um, control and visibility, I think, makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of uh, you know, vendors and a lot of folks out there that are designed to provide sort of that dashboard capability. Um, you know, a lot of analytics that gets divulged from there. And then, of course, finally, the, you get to the enterprise continuous delivery. So there's our, there's our pyramid built essentially for, you know, as we see the requirements for continuous delivery at scale. Uh, and then, of course, you know, we here at CloudBees, being Enterprise Jenkins company, we look to, you know, essentially enable you, you know, to, to go about doing that. So the next slide that I want to talk about here is, uh, and this is my final slide, and then we'll get to the demonstration, is just about where is the market today um, in terms of folks that were surveyed. We'd like to know where they fit, and so we have this quadrant model, if you will. Um, and the quadrant model basically builds, so from quadrant one through four, you essentially get more enterprise-wide, you essentially get more folks involved, and you certainly get, you know, a, a sort of a higher satisfaction across the whole organization. So if we, if we asked everybody, you know, where do you feel you practice in terms of, you know, your actual agile ability or DevOps ability, if you will, uh, you can respond either in the first quadrant, which, which actually is quadrant zero, uh, some folks feel like they don't actually, um, you know, belong on a chart anywhere because they're just sort of getting close to some type of an agile methodology. Perhaps they're still doing waterfall. Um, so let me show you the results here. So some of those folks felt like they, they weren't even on a chart yet. Um, and then quadrant one, which is that team level, so it's just a small team, or perhaps just a couple projects. You know, that, that certainly is somewhat, somewhat like a third of the respondents. And then as you build from there, Quadrant two, you, now you start getting into team level CD. So you actually have one particular team in the organization that's actually going with a full automated process all the way to deliverable artifacts. Uh, quadrant three kind of steps back and says, well, we, we'd like to see the team level agile, you know, basically promote that across the whole enterprise. And then, so that's the enterprise agile. And then finally, the, the magic quadrant, if you will, is quadrant four, right, where you have enterprise CD. So with that, that's the, that's the Enterprise Jenkins, that's the CloudBees message for now. I'm going to pass the baton over to Guy. And so Guy, I'm going to make you the presenter and, and let you carry the rest of the, the show. And then I'll be back at the end to kind of tie things up. While we're waiting for Guy's uh, screen to come on, just a quick reminder, this webinar is being recorded. Please ask questions in the question section of the interface. And again, just a quick reminder, we are going to have a really short 30-second survey at the end that would really help Blaze Meter, CloudBees, and ourselves uh, kind of gauge where the audience is. That being said, Guy? Hi. Hi, guys. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, great. So, hi. Um, this is Guy from Blaze Meter, um, a senior support engineer here in Blaze Meter, and um, we provide a platform, a SaaS platform uh, for load and performance test testing um, and what I'm actually going to show you today is uh, a pretty cool uh, open source project that we developed here in-house uh, in BlazeMeter called Taurus uh, but we'll get to that in a minute so first of all um, I'd like to uh, discuss um, performance testing and, and the importance of it and uh, uh, specifically continuous uh, testing as we call it here. So uh, as Neil discussed before, um, when using CI, CD, and I'm going to focus more on the, on the performance testing side of, of uh, the continuous integration, continuous delivery uh, methodologies, uh, you actually shorten the time to release as you get more quality builds uh, for, for, every, uh, you can, for every commit of, uh, or, uh, or on a periodic uh, uh, step. And um, just a second, sorry. So um, Neil already discussed uh, the importance of continuous delivery, and especially on SaaS, SaaS companies, uh, uh, we get a very large increase, uh, specifically in the last uh, couple of years. And 
when it's gotten continuous testing, and when you test over time, all the time, uh, and it's part of an automation, um, you get you get to reduce the time to release and improve the quality of your product. So you save developers time, you save QA uh, engineers time, and you get uh, a more quality product. Um, the problem is testing can be complicated, and um, we're here in BlazeMeter uh, want to simplify things for you. So um, we developed uh, this open source tool called Taurus. Um, so as you can see, uh, Taurus stands for Testing Automation Runs Smoothly, and it's basically a command line tool. Um, that's why it's very intuitive, uh, very easy to use, uh, especially uh, for developers, QA engineers, DevOps engineers, uh, uh, as you can simply run your uh, performance tests uh, from the command line, from your terminal. Um, the cool thing about Taurus is it supports nine different uh, open source load testing tools such as JMeter, Selenium, Gatling, the Grinder, Locust.io, uh, etc. Uh, but you don't really have to learn the syntax of all of all of these tools. Uh, and especially for JMeter, you don't have to really get uh, inside the JMeter GUI. You can simply write your uh, performance test scripts using YAML or JSON formats, where you're, which are uh, familiar to uh, to all. Uh, and very easy to use, very easy to modify. Um, also, as I said, Taurus is an open source tool, so uh, you can start using it right away, and you don't need a license or anything, um, and, and it's free to use. And very easy to install as well. Uh, use it seems, uh, you just use a pip install, a BZT, and, and that's how it works. Um, so how to solve the puzzle? So um, we're here in a webinar together with, with CloudBees, because Taurus is actually a test automation framework and it works perfectly with Jenkins, uh, with CI tools. So um, as you can see here in this diagram, um, within Jenkins, uh, within your Jenkins project, you can control, uh, for example, pass-fail criteria and stuff like that. Uh, and you can initiate your Taurus uh, scripts uh, from pipeline or from a shell executor a build step as it's a simple command line tool. Uh, Taurus behind the scenes, as, it said, as I said before, it supports nine different uh, open source load testing tools. Uh, we're going to show uh, how it runs JMeter uh, in the webinar today. Uh, and JMeter, uh, as you might know, is the leading uh, open source uh, load testing tool. We'll send the requests to your backend, backend server for your web application or for your mobile application. So uh, this is how it will work. So how does Taurus work? Uh, how does it look like? Um, this is uh, a quite a simple uh, Taurus script uh, execution. And by looking at this, uh, even if you're not really familiar with performance testing, uh, you can pretty much uh, 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 understand what's going on here. So uh, as you can see, we have the execution going on. We're going to run uh, 20 concurrent users. We're going to hold uh, these users for five minutes. We're going to have a ramp up of 60 seconds. This means that it's going to take 60 seconds to get from zero concurrency to 20 uh, uh, concurrent users. And uh, we're going to have a thread group that basically uh, will run two requests. One request will have this label, Blaze Demo here. It's going to be a uh, get request to this URL over here, which is a, a demo site that we run demos on. Um, and we'll have another request, uh, which will be labeled uh, reserve. It's going to be a post request. And we're going to send it to this URL, uh, blaze demo slash, uh, slash reserve uh, dot, dot PHP. And we're going to add some body parameters to this post request. So this uh, is how you uh, create uh, Taurus uh, scripts, uh, as you can see, with YAML format. And this script will actually run JMeter behind the scenes. So you don't have to get into the JMeter GUI. Uh, you can simply use uh, this uh, simple syntax in order to create your scenario. Uh, so let's move over to the demo and see um, how it works. So um, I created some scripts over here. Um, a very simple script to what we just saw before. Um, and uh, I'm going to add some uh, additional functionality to it, uh, which is another module of Taurus called uh, pass-fail. Um, so this is also pretty straightforward. Um, 
we simply add uh, this uh, pass fail module, uh, which is also in YAML format, and we're going to set uh, a criteria. Uh, so the average response time, if it goes over 10 milliseconds, uh, uh, I intentionally did it uh, so it will fail, so you can see how it works. More than 10 milliseconds for seven uh, seconds in a row, uh, this is going to stop our test as failed. And if the hits, the number of hits for this specific label in our test is going to uh, uh, rise more than 10, for 13 seconds we're going to continue as failed. So uh, let's see how it works. I'm just going to bring up uh, the terminal over here. Okay. So um, I already have uh, these scripts over here. and. Also, uh, you can have modularity here, so you can have uh, different YAML scripts and you can uh, run them together. So all you have to do, I'll just enlarge this so you can see, is run bzt command and then uh, the name of the uh, YAML script, which is uh, local test. And we're going to add the pass fail criteria as well and simply click enter. Um, this is going to now initiate Torus. And as I said, it's going to run uh, JMeter behind the scene, and it will uh, load up this um, very simple uh, dashboard, uh, which will show us uh, metrics for um, our test. So we can see the labels over here, we can see the hits, the failures, etc. And if you look over here, you see that there's alert for the average response time, uh, just went over seven seconds and failed the test as we intended. Uh, so this is how the criteria works as well. Um, now I'm going to show you uh, how it works um, with nicer reports uh, using blaze meter. So uh, if I simply add a dash report to uh, this command, um, instead of showing up uh, these pretty simple um, uh, terminal dashboards, it's going to redirect us uh, to the browser to Blaze Meter, and this is Blaze Meter. As I said, it's our uh, SaaS platform uh, for uh, running performance load and performance tests. And over here, uh, we're going to have a much nicer, colorful reports to show us uh, all the KPIs uh, for our tests. So um, it will look something like this, okay? And we can run it from multiple uh, geographic locations. So over here, I run it from two locations, which is uh, uh, AWS Virginia and AWS uh, North California. And I run 500 uh, concurrent users. By the way, over here, we just can see that it just started. Uh, so this test, uh, I'm just running from my, my local machine, but just using uh, the dash report option to show these nice uh, reports. And you can see all kinds of information about the labels, and if some of you are familiar with JMeter, um, this request that report uh, uh, reminds of the uh, aggregate report of JMeter, and we can also uh, focus on a specific part of the test uh, here in the timeline report, uh, and filter if you want to uh, see only uh, just a part of the test, like only the virtual users of a specific label, we can zoom in so we can better understand how, how our servers are reacting, how uh, and they are reacting to the load. Um, so this is just a bit about Torus and about uh, Blaze Meter. Now, as you saw before, I just showed you as it's a command line tool, uh, and all you have to do in order to run your, your test is uh, just create your YAML scripts and then run this BZT command. Uh, it integrates very nicely and, and smoothly into Jenkins. So uh, what I did here, let me show you, um, created a pipeline script in Jenkins, okay? And in this pipeline script, which is in uh, Groovy code, um, we're gonna run uh, two parallel a, a, a stages. One of them is the performance test, uh, which is Blaze Meter test, and there's another analysis, which is uh, simply uh, going to sleep for 60 seconds. But if you can, you can look at the, at the command we're running here. So exactly the same as we ran locally, 
we're going to run the busy t command. Uh, we're going to run run uh, this script called the cloud test dot uh, yaml. Uh, I'm going to uh, add another yaml script which is called blazemeter api key. Uh, this is a module of Torus that uh, uh, identifies my api key, so I can use my blazemeter sub subscription to actually run uh, large scale tests in the cloud. And uh, you can see that it pulls the script from my GitHub repository. So if we take a quick look at my GitHub repository, um, I simply uploaded um, uh, my uh, Tor scripts right here, so over here. So you can check, take a look at the cloud test that I'm uh, running here within uh, Jenkins. And if we're using the same performance test script that I just showed you before, uh, just see how easy it is to run it from the cloud. So all you have to do is add uh, this location parameter and you can add uh, uh, your desired location. So for example, US East-1 uh, uh, represents the AWS Virginia location and a, uh, US West-1 uh, is the North California location. And it's very easy to modify and maintain these scripts uh, as opposed to JMeter, which is in XML format and it's uh, uh, not very convenient. Over here, if you want to increase the concurrency, simply change it from 1,000 to 100,000. If you want to uh, uh, add some more cloud instances, simply increase these numbers over here. As we just saw uh, in this test, for example, it ran from two different locations, California and Virginia. So, I'm using this GitHub repository, going back to my Jenkins uh, uh, project over here, pulling these scripts from my GitHub repository, and uh, once I run uh, this test, okay, let's go over uh, here, and you can see this nice branching as I ran actually two parallel jobs. So let's go over to the BlazeMeter test, and I can see my shell script over here, and I can actually see all these um, metrics, these KPIs uh, on runtime from a performance test from Jenkins. And if I'd like to see them uh, within BlazeMeter, I, can, I have this link over here, which simply redirects me uh, to BlazeMeter so I can get uh, this nice colorful uh, reporting. This is all happening in real time, so I can uh, understand what's uh, happening uh, uh, to my test uh, in real time. Uh, so if we go back to uh, the presentation, just to summarize, um, we show we saw how to uh, shorten the time to release, how to uh, get more quality uh, automation, and how to uh, get very easy test configuration maintenance using Torus uh, uh, with the DSL language, uh, YAML uh, format. And, and and uh, yes, and that's 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 my demonstration over here. So uh, I'll just uh, will pass uh, I'll pass it over back to to Neil. I think Neil, if you could take over, and uh, while Neil is taking over, again reminder: we're going to have a survey at the end. If if you don't mind answering a few questions. Um, Neil, would you mind if I popped in a couple of poll questions right now to get the audience involved before I hand it over, or would you prefer to jump please right now? Yeah, please. Great. All right, guys out in the audience, if you don't mind, just a couple of qu two quick questions. Are you familiar with the Taurus test automation tool? And uh, you just saw it demonstrated, but I guess you know prior to it, is anyone familiar with it? And it did, either you are, you are, and there's only three questions, only three possible answers here. So if you can have your answers, please, we'd appreciate it. We'll close the poll up here in about five, four, three, two, one. And the survey is, well, I, I guess, to be expected for a new, uh, a new tool, 88% not familiar. Well, the good news is hopefully you will be after, the, after today's uh, webinar. 11% familiar but have not yet tried it. So 99% of you have not really used it. And I guess that means there's lots of room to grow. Let's get to our next polling question really quickly. And that is, this one's more on Jenkins Pipeline, which I'm, I'm hoping we see.
a higher rate of usage. To what extent are you using Jenkins pipelines today? Have not tried it, experimenting, standalone pipeline, or pipeline with code is multi-branch, which is kind of the ultimate use there. So again, if you can answer this, and we'll close questioning, uh, answers off in five, four, three, two, one. And survey says, wow, pretty pretty even there. So we've got about a th almost a third of people experimenting with it, an almost another third doing uh, standalone pipeline jobs. And this is actually a pretty high number, 22%, nearly a quarter, a little more than a fifth, with pipeline with code is multi-branch. Neil, I don't know how that matches up to your experience, but that sounds pretty high. Well, I think that's good news, Alan. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good survey. That, that tends to match what I see in the marketplace and talking with folks. Um, you know, again, all the pipeline work that you've seen so far is available for all Jenkins users, so we're, we're happy to see those results. Yep. And, Neil, just before I, I answered a few people privately on questions, uh, the folks at BlazeMeter are aware, unfortunately, the experience a few a technical difficulty or two right now they're aware and working on it it didn't affect the demo that you saw but the the public facing site I think might be experiencing uh, difficulties there folks at blaze meter are all over it should be up shortly that being said Neil take it away thanks Alan and so uh, I'm just going to wrap up the the little demonstration webinar today with a few slides so so taking it you know you saw um, in guys demonstration there and you saw a little bit of uh, what we call you know, Jenkins pipeline and in actuality that's actually the blue ocean uh, user experience so that's the new user experience that's uh, that's the code name for it um, the final user, you know actual GUI uh, name is going to be uh, revealed some, at some point soon um, but that is available for Jenkins users um, and you see immediately the ability that uh, you now get the pipeline uh, UI uh, showing you visibly uh, for each of the stages what's going on. You also see if you do have parallel tasks in your pipeline, so parallel is that, that keyword that we use to define doing things in multiple uh, instances at the same time. You see the fan out there where it goes in the test stage. It's actually using, in this example, this screen uh, shot here, it's actually, uh, you, could, you could envision doing a test on uh, you know, two different browsers, both the Edge and, and Firefox browser. Um, and then, of course, that fans uh, back in at the end uh, and going through the last two stages there into production. So a little uh, extra things about Blue Ocean. Yeah, it's definitely reshaping the, the user experience. Um, it, for those of you who might not uh, experienced it yet, you actually, um, uh, we're kind of excited about this. You actually can create pipelines. There's actually a pipeline editor. Um, so to keep this all UI branded, you're actually able to go in and, and create these pipelines now. Uh, using an actual pipeline editor, it will generate all of the groovy behind the scenes that you need for that particular pipeline. And um, along with that, you'll actually see graphically when you start to do things like you know, parallel tasks, you'll see the fan out capability um, and you'll be able to click, uh, in this view, you'll be able to click the plus sign in order to add more tasks uh, along the way. So it, it makes it, I think, much easier for those folks that want to get GUI-centric and, and use it from this standpoint. Even, even the experienced coders out there probably could appreciate um, just having some, you know, a, a quick, uh, certainly it's a quick way to kind of get used to, you know, this UI experience. Um, and so we hope you all can take advantage of that. Uh, along with more dashboarding capability built right into the UI, um, ability to see things uh, in terms of your pipeline and, and things like which, you know, branch or master this particular build came from and tagging and information like that. So. Lots more to come, stay tuned to that. Um, and so I, I think as you look at the enterprise, you know, solutions that, you know, uh, Cloudbees and BlazeMeter are bringing to the forefront now, um, there's several, you know, issues that we're looking to solve just to kind of wrap this up, right? There's, there's all kinds of uh, tool chain compatibility issues or support issues if you want, you know, to really put a, you know, the light bulb on it, um, where we kind of, you know, come in and help you work with those situations. Um, certainly when you talked about manageability or scaling, you know, to multiple instances across the whole enterprise, um, you know, that's just what we kind of talk about every day when we, when we talk with customers and, and folks. 
I wanted to talk a little bit about um, for copies customers, just really quick, just some of, some of the uh, capabilities that we have rolled out uh, in, in the short time frame here. So there's a copies assurance program. And so, you know, the aim for this program is for customers to really uh, remove some of the pain when it comes to Jenkins upgrades, both Jenkins core and Jenkins plugins as well. Um, we verify certain plugins and we're, we're adding to that list uh, over time. Uh, so a lot of your favorite or most commonly used uh, Jenkins extensions um, should be added to that list. If they're not already, they will be very soon. Um, and then uh, sort of final slide here from the Cloudbees perspective is, is that the Cloudbees network um, has launched uh, earlier, I should say late last year. Um, this is a, a, what we like to think of as a community um, you know, network. This is not just for, for customers, although some of the things are certainly behind you know, a customer uh, login page. Um, a lot of the, the, the actual documentation and knowledge base is available for everyone to kind of take, you know, take a look at. So I encourage you to, to perhaps um, look at that, and um, you know, if you want to get involved, uh, feel free to give us, you know, give us a, a ring. So go.cloudbees.com is that URL. All right. Um, well, that's that basically finishes my my part of the slide deck today. Um, I want to bring up the next step slide. So those of you that are watching can kind of you know, get the URLs, uh, understand some of you know both BlazeMeter and Copies, where we you know our perspective and how you can get started you know, in your organization. Neil and Guy, thanks so much for the presentation here. Guys, we have some really great questions that we're going to be asking as well. And again, anyone in the audience, if you do have questions, type them in while we're going to try to get to them. Before we do, though, I want to address two or three people commented or in the question section. Was well, this webinar about BlazeMeter's SAS, uh, Taurus, or or Jenkins pipeline, and the answer is both, right? One of the one of the nice things about Jenkins is it has become sort of a nexus, if you will, for so many different tools such as BlazeMeter to to, to uh, leverage, and and not only for BlazeMeter to leverage, but for the Jenkins community to leverage all of these great tools working together. And it's part of something I don't know how many of you out there are familiar with something called the DevOps Express, of which CA BlazeMeter is a member as well as Jenkins CloudBees, rather. And um, and that's really what it's about: is interoperability, common support, common interoperability, reference architectures, where we're seeing you know some of the leading players in the DevOps space doing it. So keep your eyes open for that and let, let's jump into our questions. Our first question is for Matt and you know what, Neil or Guy, either one of you can answer, for, answer it, but it's probably a Neil question. How does continuous delivery lead to lower costs of development and better quality? Uh, you know, the faster time to market, more satisfied, more satisfied customers and competitive advantages are readily apparent. But how does it lead to lower cost of development and better code quality? Neil? Thanks, Alan. Um, so I think, you know, to answer that question, uh, that was a good question, by the way. It, it probably deserves its own webinar. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, but I think some of the, some of the key <coughs> points there are that, you know, it, it just kind of hops back to the automation, right, as key to kind of reducing the human footprint and, and need to get involved. Um, you know, nobody likes to be part of the um, verification team, QA team, where there's a lot of human tasks that are, you know, basically more serial than parallel in nature. So we like to think that using pipeline and having things run in parallel and automate as much as possible um, with all the integrations like our, you know, with our friends at BlazeMeter. Um, having those things run, you know, simultaneously or anytime a code commit is made, I think reduces the human interaction, human need. You know, we we, we definitely uh, consider the cost of you know of all the folks on the webinar today is uh, significant, and we, we want to make sure everybody's most as efficient as they can be. Got it, Neil. This next question is for you as well, and it goes kind of into the nitty gritty of your early slides. You mentioned that 11% of enterprise a CD relating back to the chart, but the chart said 61% were practicing CD. Maybe uh, Elizabeth misunderstood. 61% seemed kind of high. You just want yeah, to that's clarify a, your numbers there. Yeah, that's a great, great question. Thanks for pointing that out. So, um, in, in the slides themselves, um, and I can actually 
uh, run those again here. So, so there was this slide that was talking about the quadrant model, and in terms of responses, um, this survey showed that um, fully 11% are actually practicing, practicing enterprise CD, where they actually have you know, the entire enterprise delivering um, artifacts ready for production uh, on an automated, you know, consistent measure. Uh, and then re referring back to the other contrast, uh, in this particular survey, we found that 61% were practicing CD, and they're deploying, you know, once per week or more. Um, so that could be the fact that they have an automation CD pipeline, um, but it could just be at, a, you know, a team level. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the entire enterprise working that. Um, and then further, it's, it's quantifying it by, you know, at least once per week or more. Certainly, um, if you're considering, uh, you know, deploying our CD capabilities, you might think that it would be more frequent than that. So different surveys, um, but it's still a good question. I'm glad we had a chance to clarify that. Yep. Yeah. And really it goes to the definition of enterprise CD, which is the sort of all-in model. Um, next question is for Guy, though. Guy, which testing tools can be connected to Taurus? Um, hi there. So Taurus, uh, as I said, supports uh, nine different uh, open source load and functional testing tools. Um, so we have JMeter, we have Selenium, we have Gatling, we have Grinder, we have Locust, we have PBench, we have Sage, we have Apache Benchmark, we have Tsung. Um, and maybe even more to go, but these are uh, uh, like the, the leading ones and um, and the most uh, most used ones. Especially JMeter, Selenium, and Gatling, I think, are now the leading ones. But we support uh, the rest as well, as I said. And uh, just just to elaborate a bit, um, um, when I when you, I showed you um, the scripts that I ran. Um, I didn't specify an executor. Just, I just want to show you if I uh, I'll share my screen here, for example. Uh, doesn't matter. Um, if you remember the uh, YAML scripts that I created, uh, if you want to use, oh, okay, thanks for that. Um, so, JMeter is the default executor. So once I simply create uh, uh, a YAML execution file over here, and I don't specify any executor. Uh, by default, it will run JMeter behind the scenes, and it will create an artifact directory uh, with the JMX file. So it will actually create my JMeter scripts from this simple execution uh, YAML file. Uh, if I want to run the same script but with Gatling, I can simply add another parameter here called executor and set it to be uh, Gatling. Uh, by doing this, um, yeah, Taurus will actually generate a Scala script to run Gatling, and it will run Gatling behind the scenes, and in the artifact directory, it will uh, uh, save all the logs uh, of Gatling. If I want to do the same with Selenium, simply uh, set the executor to Selenium. So it's that easy, and um, very important to add, um, if you guys already have uh, uh, some uh, configured scripts, or let's say you're already running using JMeter, or you're already using Selenium, and you have some Python or JavaScripts uh, uh, for Selenium, and you want to keep using them, that's also okay. You can, instead of uh, specifying the whole execution within the YAML script, you can also add a path uh, to your to your uh, Python or JavaScript or Scala script for Gatling, and then keep using your uh, already configured scripts but uh, add some uh, modifications or add some additional configurations within the YAML. This way it's very easy to maintain, very easy to modify. Uh, you can keep using uh, the tools that you're using um, and you can uh, uh, make them more scalable as uh, with Taurus you can run uh, uh, your performance scripts uh, using the BlazeMeter cloud. So you can run uh, your already defined scripts for hundreds of thousands or even a million concurrent users all at once uh, using the BlazeMeter uh, 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 cloud scalability and you also get the nice uh, colorful reporting that I showed you before. So, uh, Great. Guy, don't, don't go off screen because this next one I think is a little deep in the weeds that, that you're going to need to answer. Where do I, uh, Mahesh, 
asks, where do I define whether a test is a pass or a fail for a performance test? I may have several parameters like response time SLA or error rate or HPS or a combination of these, of all of these. How do I define whether it's a, pa a, a pass or fail? Okay, so great question. Um, if you see uh, my screen right now, uh, and I'll actually I want to show you uh, the other options as well. So I'll just uh, uh, open up, uh, uh, this is the GetTorus website, uh, by the way. And in the demonstration that I did, um, I used, and here you can see uh, all of the options, but um, for example, uh, AVG-RT uh, 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 is, is for the average response time. So let's say uh, you want to set a criteria, so uh, to, to, to be set so if the average response time uh, goes over uh, let's say uh, 100 milliseconds for uh, 10 seconds and then after the comma you can decide what will happen if this criteria is met so you can decide if you want to stop the, the test has failed or you want to continue but mark it has failed so you have uh, you have different options over here and uh, you don't have to use uh, response time you can use uh, the latency, you can use uh, the connect time, you can use uh, uh, the standard deviation for the full response time, um, you can use the error rate or the success uh, responses, so you have all these options over here. You can also add the custom message for the criteria, so uh, when you have uh, look in the logs, you can also uh, get this message in, in Jenkins, uh, so from your Jenkins project, you're able to see uh, 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 customized message as, such as uh, uh, the test failed because it passes the past the, the the maximum latency that we set or something like that. Um, so it's very very easy to configure. Uh, you can have it all within the same YAML script together with the execution. Or what uh, we always recommend is modularity. Uh, so you can set the pass fail configuration in one YAML script. You can set the execution in a different YAML script, and then you can simply run uh, 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 the BZT command with multiple YAML scripts. And once you do that, it will merge them all into one script uh, and apply all these additional configurations and modules. Okay. Next, can Taurus replace Jane? I think. We, this, I know the answer. Can Taurus replace JMeter? If not, what does JMeter do that Taurus can't? Okay, that's a, also a great question. Um, I think the answer is no. The answer, is, I don't think it's no because JMeter um, has a, a, a very vast amount of functionality. So uh, currently, Taurus, if you want to define a performance test, uh, using this nice YAML uh, format over here, uh, you can specify uh, HTTP requests as you saw here, just the most basic request that you can uh, uh, sampler that you can uh, set in JMeter. You can also set some uh, request headers and you can set uh, some regular expression extractors and, and stuff like that. But uh, JMeter has uh, some uh, more complex uh, configuration um, that uh, is still not possible to do uh, only with a YAML script. Um, so it doesn't replace it, uh, but they work great together. Because the thing is, if you look, uh, you can still see my screen, right? If uh, I'll just open JMeter, for example, uh, to show you an example. So let's see. Um, Okay, so um, we also have uh, Taurus also provides a converter uh, called the JMX uh, called the uh, yeah JMX to YAML converter. So we can take all your JMX files and convert them into YAML. Um, so you can start. Uh, using those, um, but the thing is that it still doesn't replace it completely as if you, uh, especially if we are talking about uh, 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 CSM uh, support. So for example, uh, you saw that I uploaded my YAML scripts into uh, 
uh, GitHub, and it's, it was very easy for me to make modifications in my YAML script because it's simple YAML format, and I simply have parameters like concurrency, like hold for. I simply change the numbers as I please, and that's it. Uh, but if we look at a more complex uh, JMeter script, so for example, uh, let's look at this one. Okay. Uh, so it has some more uh, configuration. It's some bin shell processors. It's some such some regular expressions, uh, expressions, and so on. Uh, if we want to control and modify this script uh, with the CSM, so which means we'll have to uh, open it uh, uh, in the XML format of it, it looks terrible. So it, it's really hard to maintain. It will look, this JMeter script will look like this. Uh, okay, like this. So just compare this nice YAML script to this terrible XML format, and this is a real pain. This is a real pain uh, uh, to modify. This is a real pain uh, to maintain. Uh, so that's the beauty of Taurus. So you, if you have a really complex JMeter script, keep it, and then use Taurus just for maintain, maintenance, use it for uh, modifications, use it for uh, automation with CI tools, um, but it still doesn't replace a, a complex, very complex script of JMeter, but it enhanced them. Okay. One more for you, Guy. Can we include Load Runner instead of JMeter? Hey. Um, that's also a great question. Uh, so actually, Load Runner, as you know, uh, is not open to source. It's pretty much uh, the the opposite. Um, uh, we're here in BlazeMeter. We're more of a, a open source uh, SaaS uh, uh, company over here. And you, as you saw, we support uh, many different uh, open source load testing tools. Um, we don't support Load Runner. Uh, however, um, we uh, we do have uh, working on a converter from uh, Load Runner scripts uh, to JMeter. Uh, we we actually uh, had some really nice blog posts and webinars uh, about uh, uh, the advantages of, of using JMeter and open source load testing tools uh, comparing to Load Runner. Uh, so you can uh, go to our website and, and check them out. Um, so you can see you can seek some nice comparison and see the differences. But uh, uh, to uh, to uh, to answer the question, no, we don't we don't support uh, Load Runner. You can't run Load Runner uh, with Taurus. Great. Okay. Uh -uh. There's another one for you guys. Sorry to put you on uh, double time here. If it can, <laughs> can the response times from the APM tool be used for the success fail criteria? Hmm. Interesting question. So, um, first of all, uh, uh, it's a good question about APM because APM is very, very important, um, and especially for uh, for performance tests. So. Let me just show you. Um, if we go here to to the BlazeMeter platform, right, and I uh, just go to uh, to some tests. Let's just create a new JMeter test, for example. This is how it looks like. So um, over here, you can upload uh, your JMeter script. Uh, you can override some of the configuration, and as you can see here in the additional features, we support many uh, APIs. APM tools such as uh, Dynatrace APM, such as CA APM, such as New Relic APM, such as CloudWatch. Um, now we have uh, nice integrations with these, with these APM tools. Uh, so, for example, CloudWatch. If you have a CloudWatch profile and you're using it uh, uh, to monitor your servers, your application servers, um, once you use this nice integration here with BlazeMeter, and you run. A, a, your performance test with BlazeMeter, you will actually get these metrics inside the BlazeMeter report. So you will be able to monitor uh, both uh, the load engine and your target server together. You will get both reports together uh, here in BlazeMeter. Um, regarding the test fail criteria, you can set them here. These apply uh, uh, only to the test itself. So. Um, if you set here a KPI, for example, for 
uh, uh, response time and you want to see the average response time, this will be the average response time of uh, uh, your target server, but it will be uh, the response time as it will be responding to the requests that the load engine is sending. So um, these are the interesting test fail criteria. These are the, uh, the interesting uh, uh, thing that you want to measure. Um, so we do have an integration with APM. Uh, you can use both reports together. You can use uh, uh, set your test fail criteria. Um, but then this is how it works. I hope you, I answered the question. I think you did. Um, here, one more for you, Guy. Instead of manually invoking the Taurus script from CloudBees, you know, the command line, I assume the script can be invoked as part of an automated build verification process, and that's from Shamim. Obviously, obviously, and great question. So, um, once you have your uh, Jenkins uh, project here configured, uh, it can be pipeline, it can be uh, 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 just uh, uh, the classic uh, Jenkins project. Um, as you already saw, I, I integrated my uh, Git repository over here. I have all my uh, scripts and my data files in my GitHub repository and um, I can simply configure uh, the Jenkins project uh, to build when a change is pushed to GitHub and then once uh, I make a change here okay and I, I change one of the parameters or whatever I can just change uh, the test name or uh, I can change the concurrency or I can change the number of, of cloud instances that uh, will uh, actually run my test uh, I can configure it uh, so every change here in GitHub will uh, trigger uh, uh, my Jenkins project and then I will have another uh, build per commit. Uh, uh, so this will be fully automated. Uh, it's very easy to configure. I actually uh, wrote a blog post about this myself so uh, I can share it uh, with you if you want. Uh, <laughs> sure. Mm. It's on GitHub. Um, let's see, yes, oh, <laughs> I guess it's now, uh, well, the BlazeMeter marketing uh, site is, is down currently, where R&D uh, team is working on fixing that, but uh, you can you just You know what, we'll, for... we'll put it up, Guy, we'll, when we put up uh, the notes from this, we'll, we'll try to... Okay, okay, no problem, but regarding Fair the question, enough. of course it's possible, and uh, uh, you will see how to in the blog post. Okay, we only have time for a few more questions. We have so many more here, though. We will get them to Guy, and uh, so I'm drawing a blank all of a sudden. I apologize uh, to, to get our answers in here for everyone. Neil, Neil, I'm going to let you have one question here, though, and that was uh, that you know obviously in our demo we were using Blue Ocean, and the question is: Is CloudBees considering Blue Ocean ready for prime time yet at this point, or if not, when? That's a great question. So yes, Blue Ocean, uh, the actual plugin is available in, in the you know Jenkins-CI.org site. So it is open source. You only need to install the one Blue Ocean plugin, and all the dependencies will come with it. It is still considered a beta um, project. Uh, you know we we um, are working on that diligently. Uh, I expect, uh, and again, I'm in sales, so I'm allowed to say this, but I expect Blue Ocean to be available to the general public, you know, as a full, um, capable plugin in the next month or so. So it's not going to be very long, but it is in beta, and I encourage you to take a look at it now. Good, guys. Let me wrap things up here. We do have many, many questions that were unanswered. We will get them to Neil and Guy. We will try to get you answers to your questions. We value your time, your questions, and that's what we that's why we do these webinars. Uh, secondly, um, I know the Blaze Media marketing site was down. We apologize. It appears actually that the Amazon S3 is having a problem. I don't know if Blaze use Blaze Media uses Amazon, but might have something to do with that. Um, yes, yes, we do. It's related. Okay, so I, that might be our our issue right there. But we we will try to get to the rest of these questions. I it bugs me that we can't. I I appreciate the questions. But Guy and Neil, what a fantastic webinar today! I I think our audience really learned a lot, and you certainly stimulated them 
to start thinking about Taurus and Jenkins pipelines as we, we see from the volume of questions. Maybe we'll have you both on again soon and we can do a part two to this thing. Um, but, but again, thanks very much to both of you. Thanks to Blazemeter, CA Blazemeter, for sponsoring today's webinar. Thanks to CloudBees for participating. Most of all, thanks to the 3,000 some odd number of you folks who registered for today's webinar. Um, again, please stay on. We are going to do a really short survey. I need you to help with that. Number two, we're not going to mail you the recording. We're going to mail you a link to the recording and that will hopefully be in the next 24 hours or so. So with that said, let me turn things over to get the survey up here. And uh, this is Alan Schimmel for DevOps.com, and we hope to see you soon on another DevOps.com webinar. Uh, Jules in the back end, can we get can we get our survey up? Yes. Okay, it will come up when the webinar ends, so I think we're ready then. Again, this is Alan Schimmel for DevOps.com. Everyone, your webinar will be coming up, and thanks. Have a great day. Thank you.